Mara Graffin. I'm the food director at Woolworths Fresh Magazine and we know it's a crazy time right now. Um, you're at home, I'm at home in my little kitchen. I really want to show you how simple it is to use fresh produce as the basis to all of your recipes. And this is a little hint as to what we're going to be cooking first, which is a basic bolognese sauce. So let's get started. <laughs> Pop the tomatoes onto your tray, add your garlic, a lot of oil. So we're just gonna add a little bit of oregano leaves. You really wanna use a hard herb, but you could use rosemary if you have it. I just had this in my fridge. So I've preheated the oven already. Um, you wanna do that as your first step. So I've preheated it to 200 degrees fan forced. So just grab your tomatoes and chuck them in there. And then basically it's kind of like a set and forget. We can leave them in there for about half an hour. They're gonna get nice and full depth of flavour. This is the mince that I'm going to use. I've just used beef mince, but you can use any mince you like. You could even not use mince at all. You could use some mushrooms chopped up. They still have a great meaty texture that kind of mimics mince. Or even make a lentil bolognese, so it's really up to you. I'm of the belief that you should cook the mince first because onion and garlic, they kind of cook at a lower, slower temperature to how I want to cook this mince. This needs to be a really high, fast heat and we really want to get some nice colour on there to give some maximum flavour to the dish. So I've put that on a high heat and all I'm going to do is just add the mince. And I'll put a tiny bit of oil in that too. So you can break it up a little bit at this stage, but don't stress too much about it. Obviously as it cooks down in the sauce, it's going to break up too. So I'm just going to leave that to sit there now. If you wanted to add a little spicy twist to this, you could add in a chilli. I love fresh red chilies. Um, also, while you're cooking that mince, if you had even some leftover bacon, or you had some chorizo or something like that, just chuck it in there, it's all just extra flavour. So it's not an exact science as to how many cloves of garlic you use. Love garlic. <laughs> Is that obvious? I really love garlic. If a recipe tells you to put two cloves in, ignore it and put lots. So just combine that with your onion and then we're going to add that to the pan once the mince is finished cooking. So I can see that it's getting a nice crust on the bottom now and I'm just going to leave it, let it do its thing. Alright, so those tomatoes, they look amazing. These are so soft already that all I'm going to do is grab this little fork and then just literally just smoosh these down with the garlic which is nice and beautiful and caramelised. And this is just going to make a really rustic textured sauce. So you can see all these herbs have cooked down nicely. Um, so you can see that this is really beautiful and caramelised. It's super crispy. And all I'm going to do now is just drain that into a bowl. And then I'm going to cook the onion and garlic. And you can see that there's that residual oil in there. We don't need to add anything else now to the pan. The longer you cook onion at that low temperature, it's going to get really nice and sweet. And your garlic isn't going to get too bitter. So seasoning your dish at every stage is super important. Don't just season your dish when you finish because you're really just seasoning the exterior. So add that mince back in with all the juices that were in that bowl. Okay, so I've actually got some balsamic vinegar. Um, I'm just gonna add a touch of that. Because it's got some sugar in there too, it's gonna add a little bit of sweetness and it's gonna balance out the acidity of the tomatoes. So we've got those beautiful mashed tomatoes. So now all I'm going to do is just slide all of those tomatoes in. Turn that heat up high now because what we really want it to do is for the tomatoes to thicken even more. So just make sure that's nice and combined. But I do want to show you one other tip that I have for you and that's back to our parmesan friend here. So just chop off that rind then all I'm going to do is just slice that into it, you know, just roughly chopped. It's basically going to disappear as the sauce simmers away. So just chuck that in the pan. All you need to do is just keep topping it up with a little bit of water as you cook it. So it's just going to keep those flavours um, melding together. And you can just see that that is really coming along nicely. All right, so the sauce has been cooking for about 30 minutes. I think that's kind of enough for me. If you wanted to leave it longer, you absolutely could. Um, but that Parmesan rind that I added before is completely disappeared, so I'm happy. So let's get cooking with the pasta. 
So I've got a pot of boiling water on the stove already. It's got lots of salt in it. That is key, lots of salt. So when you're cooking your pasta, it really needs to be cooked so it's still slightly firm to the bite, so al dente. Um, a way to make sure that you always achieve that is just check the back of the packet instructions and cook it for about one minute less than what it says on there. Um, you could also even use zucchini noodles. All right, so I'm super happy with the sauce now. Super luscious and also the pasta is cooked al dente. So don't drain the pasta at this stage. Actually what's gonna help you is using some of that starchy liquid to thicken your sauce further. I'm just gonna drag that into the pot now. Dragging over some of that cooking liquid with it. And then all I'm going to do is to toss that together. So again, all that starchy liquid that was sitting on our pasta is gonna help to make that sauce nice and thick. You can toss it like this if you're fancy. Shake it first, then get it towards the edge, and then <laughs> you might get stuff everywhere like I am. All right, so we're all done, guys. It's time for the plate up. So I've got my bowl here, but most importantly, I have all the garnishes. So lots of Parmesan cheese, lots of beautiful fresh herbs. And, you know, let's not be fussy about this. I'm just gonna chuck it all in the bowl. So we've already seasoned it as we went, but it doesn't hurt to add some beautiful cracked black pepper on top. Lots of Parmesan cheese, and then some beautiful fresh herbs. So I've got basil, I've got parsley. Um, you could use either or use none, whichever. 